This is not a Jesus with any kind of control of the situation. This is a Jesus who's creating a fucking Rod Serling morality play in order to teach (laughs) one dude a lesson while the collateral damage is those people are psychologically fucked with for the rest of their lives, man. Jesus doesn't go around touching their heads and being like, you won't have PTSD from this. Well, it reminds me (laughs) of uh, that verse, uh, Romans 3.12. Would you like to play a game? (laughs) (laughs) I think that actually was the book of Job. (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the lovely and talented Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Fantastic, Heath. (laughs) Great. Okay. You are on a ridiculous delay. We'll figure it out. Really bad (laughs) dial up, whatever you're working with. I am calling into the internet from 1992, everybody. (laughs) And we also have two veteran masochists who talk about Alex Jones as a job. They are also veteran masochists on this show, too. Dan and Jordan from the Knowledge Fight podcast. Gentlemen, welcome back. Hello. I was going to also pretend we were on a delay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have a delay. I have zero delay. This is as fast as I talk. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, let's get right into it. Dan, what are we going to be breaking down today? We are going to be watching The Encounter Episode 1, subtitled The Heist. Yes, we are. It's not a movie. It is a TV show. And as far as I can (laughs) tell, this is basically like the last time we were on, we watched something that was too good. There was too much to talk about. That's correct. And so this time you guys suggested Mm -hmm. that we watch something that was a barren wasteland of, <laughs> of anything interesting at all. Uh, okay, so last time Jordan and Dan made the podcast six hours long. What if we give them a 20-minute show? It'll only be eight hours long. Yeah. What if we give them a 25-minute long version of Bottle Rocket, but without any jokes, without any charm? Live-action Veggie Tales with a murder attempt. So <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, we watched three minutes of silence, the TV show. We're going to talk about it somehow. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Some modern art. <laughs> and uh, Jordan, let's be specific more than we already have. Mm-hmm. How bad was this television pure flicks series thing? Um, I believe I would call it just as bad as. I'm not going to say 9-11, but I'm not going to say not 9-11. Does that make sense? <laughs> it was bad. It, it was, was like, bad. It was like 9-12. No, 9-11 is Jason. Beck. It's as bad as Glenn Beck's show. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Extremely loud and incredibly close to 9-11 in terms of how bad it was. Great. <laughs> yes. This this TV show rained on Jordan. <laughs> I'm out of 9-11 movie right now. <laughs> Wasn't that about 9-11 somehow? I think uh, Flight 97 okay. went down. Uh, was it 93? Yeah. Shit. We shot that down over Pennsylvania. Yeah. We all know we shot that down. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> all right. it. Got him. Got, I'm on a delay and it makes it so much worse. Got it. Got it, though. You got it in there and you nailed it. <laughs> Eli said Mark Wal- Wahlberg, but earlier. It was so good when he said it earlier. All right. (laughs) Trust me, everybody. It was great. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to throw in best worst heist with entirely unclear objectives. (laughs) I don't know what they were doing. no sense. Yeah, we'll we'll get to it trying to explain that. But yeah, there's going to be a heist, but it's nonsense. Yeah. I was going to go with best worst... Uh, so-called good guy with a gun. Yeah. Who's one of the characters in this. There's, uh, you know, the, the gun people, they have that myth of the good guy with a gun saving yeah. the day. And it, 
we'll, we'll explain exactly what happens, but it goes so goddamn badly right in their face. It's the fucking greatest. <laughs> Jordan immediately when we turned it on, he was like, he's like, is this just a good guy with a gun story? <laughs> it was, it was tough. It was tough. And then after he didn't fire immediately, I was like, oh, this guy's getting shot. This guy is going to die <laughs> for sure. If you've got a good guy with a gun situation, you raise up immediately or you're getting shot. The end. Nailed it. <laughs> My best worst is I'm going to call this the best worst Jesus. Ooh, the fucking and that's worst. because I have I have read the Bible cover <laughs> to cover too many times to notice that Jesus never once successfully opened a safe in the Bible. <laughs> True, that's a fact, and that's that's unparalleled. That's unparalleled. Jesus in the Bible doesn't have telekinesis. Jesus in the Bible at no point fucking happy days is his way through a safe. He never fonds his open a safe. <laughs> he in, never fonds his fucking, open a safe. No. The, you know, the, <laughs> the epistles. No, that doesn't happen. And honestly, if he had, we'd have been more impressed. I'm just going to say it right now. Totally. Yeah. So how many times have you read the Bible cover to cover? I'm curious. Um, C to C? C to C. I would say probably 14. Whoa. 14? You're, big, you're big on 14 today. Maybe. Maybe it was uh, that many before. It, like, I was kind of forced to read it by my family, peer pressure kind of style, over and over and over again until I was maybe 16. So there I, you go. I think I probably read it cover to Ooh. cover twice. Really? But then, like, more than that, just because of the books, like, you know. Right. Like, you go through like these weird Bible studies where it's like, all right, we're going to spend a week on one chapter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. <of> the, and, <laughs> but yeah, I, in my fourth grade class, the teacher would give us uh, bucks, little fake bucks for reading like 10 oh, pages no. or something. You got the, the Bible Christian so version long. of Book It? You got no, but I chose bucks? to read the Bible because it was <laughs> so long. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that was one time there. <laughs> Just trying to win like plush animals or something. Here's your personal pan pizza for making it through Deuteronomy. Yeah. There you go, kid. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so you guys like extra Christian now or the opposite after reading the Bible a whole bunch? Um, I would go with the opposite just based on the fact that I found this show blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> from a from a you, biblical standpoint, this you, show is wrong. Do you mean the, uh, the heist, or do you mean the podcast we're on right now? A little bit of everything. Okay, currently, that's fair. Yep, that's mm -hmm. fair. fair. <laughs> we're blasphemous for atheists too. And I'm going to go with best worst divine tactic of changing someone's mind. Just a heads up. In the case of this movie, that would be contrasting scrapbooking projects. Everybody, <laughs> we're going to be looking at contrasting. Okay. Scrapbooking project. That's not an exaggeration. That will be a major plot point used by <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee, <laughs> the Son of God. Mm -hmm. A scrapbooking thing of the Shell Station. <laughs> yeah, from, <laughs> yeah, of the gas station. Yep. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, I think we got a pretty good idea of where we're going with this. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about the Encounter Episode One, the Pure Flix series. Subtitle, The Heist. And I would love to wire the money. How long does the wire need to be? Please let me know how long and how thick so I can go to Home Depot and ask them. Your future Duke, Eli Bosnick. Hey, Eli, what you doing there, buddy? Oh, I was just wiring my Nigerian prince friend some money. <laughs> He's going to give me $80 million <sighs> for this bank yeah. thing. I mean, can you believe that? No, 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 I cannot. That's so very obviously a scam. Why would you think that's real? Oh, I know. I know. I thought that at first, too. But after I learned about Mint Mobile, now I know that not everything has a catch, Heath. Hold on. What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. Wireless service for just $15 a month? Did your prince friend tell you about this? No, silly. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet, sweet savings direct to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. When Mint Mobile became a sponsor, I actually switched my phone over to their plan, and I'm never going back. All right, that sounds pretty great. So how do I sign up? Well, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. 
That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Okay, and no catch? No catch. No catch. All right. So you think your Nigerian prince friend would want double the help, maybe? I mean, I'll email and ask him. Nice. All right, guys. Time to write the Encounter TV series, episode one. Okay. Okay. So I want to start things off with a bang. I'm thinking let's open with a heist. Love it. So cool. Love Love it. it. So cool. Right? So cool. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. The bad guys, they pull up to the the bank, right? Or something like that. Ooh. Oh, what, what's ooh? What what's the problem? It's just David A.R. White only gave us four hundred dollars budget. Oh. Wow. Okay. Mm. Yeah, for the season. For for the whole for the whole season. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so not a bank robbery then, nope, I guess. No, probably not a bank. We can't get really a bank. Spitballing here. My cousin Jerry works down at the Gas and Sip. He mm-hmm. might let us use it if uh, like, you know, he's allowed to keep it open and still have customers while we shoot. The Gas and Sip. Uh, okay. I, I guess a gas station robbery could work. It's just, I already wrote a whole hostage situation bit, and I, I wrote a whole thing about getting the codes to the computer from the bank. I mean, it's tw- it's 2020, you know, gas stations have computers now. They could probably steal okay. those codes for like uh, uh, like the, the credit card. The credit cards. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but then I had a whole come to Jesus scene in the bank vaults, computer room spot. Well, gas stations probably have a vault too, right? <sighs> I don't know, man. D- does your cousin's place have a vault? Uh, no, but it does have a room in the back where he, like, takes shits and does meth. Sounds like a vault to me. Right? <laughs> this is going to be great. Okay. No, no, this is going to be great. Gas and sip. Nice. And we're back. And we're going to start with a really sad robbery team, <laughs> like the worst Ocean's Eleven gang ever, pulling up to the gas station that they're about to rob. Yeah, you got you got a, this team in the car, and and honestly, I didn't realize that they had a getaway driver until much later in, in the episode. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just those three dudes in the car. I don't know why I thought that, but I, I didn't realize that lady was in the car. Yeah, I made an immediate bet that the Bechdel test would not be passed, and uh, <laughs> based upon her screen time, her lines, which I do believe were. That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, and then she said, come on. <laughs> yes, she did say, come on. That's right. I forgot the, the, come on, come on. Does her honking the horn count as a line? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't talking to another woman about something other than a man. She was honking a horn to a man, though. <laughs> literally. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's right. There were, there were, there were two female hostages. There were two female were hostages two female and hostages. neither of them were allowed to speak. Yeah. I think what they spoke about was like, man next to me, man next to me. So yeah, not even close. No. That man has been shot. <laughs> it's true. Test. That is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did enjoy the uh, apparently leader guy of the heist gang here being like, okay, you guys all understand your job for the heist, right? And they're all like, yeah, yeah, no, we totally get it. And he's like, okay. It feels like nobody understands their job for the heist. I need you to like (laughs) say your job speech out loud. He's so mad. It's pretty great. But the best thing is like, they don't have concrete jobs for this heist, right? Like one of them is a hacker. We'll learn three quarters of the way through this fucking television episode. But one of them is just like violent, crazy guy who ruins every robbery. He might as well announce that at the beginning of his <laughs> wild introduction. Card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and I would take issue with whether or not this guy is actually a hacker. I'm not, I'm not sure what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into his hacking abilities and decisions as a hacker. Yeah. They're very interesting. What's interesting to me, too, is that, like, I have been working at a gas station and gotten robbed. Really? And this did not ring true to my experience. You okay. weren't Jesus. <laughs> now, you were you were playing the Jesus role and were not Jesus. That's so true. that would be that would go differently. There's a couple of things that they got really bad about the planning of this this robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Starting Just with gas station as the target. <laughs> well, I assume there's a reason that the gas station is the target, although I still don't understand why. 
Credit cards, but man. What does that mean? <laughs> credit cards. What does that mean? You got to get the credit cards, man. I don't know what that means. If we get the credit cards, we'll have credit cards. <laughs> what don't you understand about it? if you get credit cards, you get credit cards. You get credit cards, <laughs> then you buy Ether and Oh, my Iota. God. You are complicating this plan. This is why we're not allowed in the car together anymore before we plan heists. <laughs> the biggest problem that I see is that you can see on the door that it's open 24 hours a day. <laughs> and they're, they're doing this stick-up job in the middle of the day. It's broad daylight. There's a lady on a hover round uh, just uh, <laughs> wheeling around the parking lot. This, it, Look, it's the art of war. You attack when they least expect it. Of course, they would be planning for a late night heist. I can tell you this. Sun Tzu did not uh, turn over gas stations. <laughs> it's not what the book is about. Look, if you're not establishing the Joe dynasty, you're knocking over gas stations. Those are the way. That's how it works, yeah. man. Yeah. Lou Boo, one of the most notorious uh, <laughs> stick up men, yeah. 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 Yep, yep. Highway men. <laughs> also, speaking of problems with their strategy, this is when the literal lady on the hover round, she, she rolls up on her jazz scooter and she's like, Cal? Cal Dawson and JD <laughs> stares into the window where they they parked at one of the pumps right next to a camera. Yep. And she stares in and says their name. This is Mrs. Cranston. And she knows them personally. That seems it seems hacky that her name is Miss Cranston. Mm. Yeah, I don't she know might why. as well roll up and take a selfie with them and be like, "I'm posting this to the police station's Facebook page." I don't know why, but I am totally. <laughs> I can't wait to tell your aunt that I saw you here at the gas <laughs> yeah. station. She's my favorite character, not least of which because the moment she knocked on the window and they rolled it down, I was like. If the loose cannon doesn't shoot her right now, this whole thing is done. <laughs> okay. yeah. There's no way that you guys are getting through this. That was the only way to establish stakes. Yeah, exactly. That's almost what happens, though. So she says that. She's like, I'm going to write down your names in my journal and hand it to the police officer right over there. And they're like, yeah, OK, cool. Bye, Mrs. Cranston. And then inside the car, they're like, all right, well, that's a cancel, right? And <laughs> Yeah, obviously. Loose no cannon shit. guy is like, I can murder her right now if that's all yes! right. As she walks away. And they're like, Would that you is like me to commit not a murder? helpful. You're new. You're new guy. New guy. Get out of here. Don't murder people when we don't say. I have to say that, like, if the job you're doing isn't important enough to murder Miss Cranston, then it's not important enough to keep going after you've been made. In <laughs> that's the a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. You bail. <laughs> yeah, you got to go. <laughs> this job is so goddamn sloppy too that like you could do it anytime there is no need for like it's not like <laughs> the safe is only open between 3 and 315 <laughs> no nope. whatever just come back in eight hours there's a title fight between you know like Mike Tyson and somebody right there at the Bellagio gas station that moment yeah, <laughs> yeah like why aren't you staking that place out you don't even know that the owner is on vacation you should know everything about this job Miss Cranston's a snitch too <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because here's the thing about Miss Cranston. Mrs. Cranston sees them, is like, hello, boys, lovely to see you. And then, as we will learn, immediately goes to a police officer and is like, those motherfuckers are robbing the place. I'm telling you right now, those guys oh, are immediately. <laughs> One of the problems that I had is I don't know if the show establishes that she should see that there's a robbery going on. No, like we just see her. She racially profiles. <laughs> she does not know that a robbery is going on. She has already left the premises yeah. widely before anything goes down. Yeah. And she just goes straight up to the cop and is like, <laughs> hey, man, there are people who are not white there. We got to solve this problem. <laughs> yeah. And the cop is like, sure the fuck do. So, yeah, he's going to walk over in a second. Also, just want to mention the last thing that happens before they run in to the gas station here. Leader guy is like, all right, every." Everybody put on your ski masks and they all pull over their different color, bright, different color ski masks that they clearly had a fight over. Who gets what colors? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he's sure, like, sure. all right, ski mask. Woo. I the tiger. And they're like, all this crazy music starts happening. And everybody's like, all right, just, you know, don't, we're not doing it yet. Don't, don't woo yet. And he's like, woo. Okay. Sorry. Last one. <laughs> last one. <laughs> and then they go in. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned uh, while we were watching it that if it weren't for the music, this would be a very boring scene of just a nerd being like, hey, guys, we're going to go rob a store, eh? Yeah. <laughs> to which I replied, this is still a very boring scene. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, but they burst into what I'm going to go ahead and say is the busiest gas station in the history of time. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's too many people in there for the size of the <laughs> thing that it is. Like it's yeah. a tiny gas station. Yeah. It would be very uncomfortable to have like six people in there at the same time. <laughs> people flipping through LPs that they're buying somehow. Yeah. There's a lot of traffic. They're in digging place. in crates. Which also means that they did not wait for the six people that were present in this fucking piggly wiggly to leave before they began <laughs> their robbery. <laughs> What if they have jewels? And, and there's a one in, one out rule at the gas station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Of course. Right. It's like a hot dance club. <laughs> as soon as one of those people leave, someone else is coming. Okay, that would have been funny if they actually had to adhere to that and go in one at a time and like not realize when their plan technically activates. <laughs> when I got robbed at the gas station that I worked at, the guy did come in when there was like four people in the gas station. But that was to sort of insinuate himself and make me feel comfortable sure. with his presence. And yeah, then once yeah. those people had left, he was still in the store, and that's when he pulled his gun. Oh, is that a well-thought-out robbery? Yeah. At the very least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a good robbery. Yeah. That's how you rob a place. Yeah, he pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. How yeah. much money did he get? He, he got more than these dudes. <laughs> he got more than zero? Cool. More than yeah. zero. He got more than credit card numbers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Dan, my question for you, though, is, how many magic tricks did you do and how many craft products did you show him? Because there are, you know, there are See, factors here. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where my sort of defense strategy fell apart. Because I didn't have any collages or... <laughs> magical Classic powers. Yeah. Blunder. My strategy was more like when he said, I'm taking the 20s. I was like, you can have the 10s too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so... I just work here. Yeah, I don't care <laughs> at all. Save my money, man. Yeah. I am not a good guy with a gun. I'm a guy willing to give you all that's in the cash yeah. register. You want a carton of cigarettes too? <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit. Exactly. What do you want right. from me? Yeah. <laughs> I did enjoy when they first run in and one guy's like, all right, hands up. I said, hands up. And he pulls his gun out. And there's one guy, there's one like medium old white guy in there and he won't put his hands up and he's being all tough. And the robber guy's like, this guy won't put his hands up. He won't. <laughs> dad, dad, this guy won't put his hands up. But then leader, finally, leader. <laughs> finally, that guy puts his hands up. And I was like, oh, my God, I guarantee 100 percent this is going to be good guy with a gun later. And I was absolutely correct. Yep, that's what Jordan totally. said as well. Totally. Immediately. I think it would have been more realistic if he was holding a DVD copy of the uh, Encounter movie uh -oh. in the, from the one dollar bin. <laughs> like if he he puts his hands up and he's got the Encounter with a big one dollar sticker on it, overpriced. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I thought it would be more interesting if he wasn't like a um, good guy with a gun and he was more just a like n like a guy who's like no. Yeah. <laughs> just, just yeah, 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 I'm not going to go along with whatever you're hey, doing. guys autistic, I think. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with this. Did did we accidentally rob while Bartleby the Scribner was in here? Because this is going to fucking suck. I got to say this right now. <laughs> the term is actually neurodivergent. You're being a bigot. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin has my favorite getting robbed story. She went to get a taco one night in the middle of a robbery of the taco stand. And she walks in while the robbery is happening. Everybody's shocked. She's not paying attention. She's got her headphones in. She's on her phone. She looks up. The guy's like, give me your money. And she's like, nah, I'm out of here and just leave. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> caused a problem. Everybody was like, I mean, that's a valid move. Wow. I didn't, con I didn't consider that move, but yeah. she was there and she could just leave. Wow. Any of us could have done that at any <laughs> yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Now I want the taco truck guy to have been like, oh, sorry, I would also like to do a nah, I'm out of here. Can I also do a nah, I'm out of totally, here? Totally, totally. Was, was that an option from the beginning? Actually, you or know did what? we have to. I rob you. How about that? Can, we, <laughs> yeah, can I raise? Yeah, exactly. Stick him up. <laughs> he, uh, he puts a flout into the guy's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay, so they finally have like, you know, everybody's hands up and they think the situation is under control. And one guy walks over to the cashier and that's Bruce Marciano from the original The Encounter movie. He's the cashier and he's like, maybe I can help you. Are you looking for answers? <laughs> it's the best 
in preparation for this, I went ahead and I watched the movie of The Encounter as well. And first of all, are you serious? You guys buried the lead. You didn't tell me fucking Sting was in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's right. The yep, wrestler Sting. Do you know why? Because they didn't want you to wind up talking about Sting for 25 minutes. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's going to happen. Are you a big Sting fan? <laughs> uh, look, I like Sting as much as the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> you like a medium? You're just a relaxed medium Sting fan? Yeah, I'm a chill. Sting fan. Okay. I liked him when I was a kid. He was really cool. He hung out on the rafters and he was emotional and yeah. based on the crow and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, like, so I saw the movie and I recognize that this is a series that grew out of the movie. Is there anybody who's watching this show sincerely has probably seen the movie? Probably. So when they see the gas station attendant, they already know that's God. Yeah. Like, or Jesus. Yeah. yeah because right. of the context of the first movie. And I think that that really helped me understand the show a little bit. In the context that like people would be viewing it, did it? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. No. But what I kept thinking about while we were watching this is, if you haven't seen the Encounter movies until fairly heavily into this twenty-three minute television episode, is just about a crazy gas station attendant who's like, "Hey, man, do you want to know your own middle name?" <laughs> See, here's the yeah. problem. Here's the problem. Once I knew going in that this was Christian based, the moment the gas station attendant was weirdly calm, I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, this guy's Jesus or God or whatever. <laughs> We're going to have to do this whole thing. Yeah. God damn it. There's sort of the will they, won't they about yeah. him saying, I'm is God. Is he going to actually whatever. say he's God is yeah. the only question now, I had. Now, the thing that I think is really funny is that if you watch the movie, He's really blunt about being Jesus. Yo, bro, I'm Jesus. He, yes. Yeah. Mm. He constantly, when people are like, how do you know my name? He's like, I'm, I'm Jesus. Jesus. I know everything. Yeah, what are we talking <laughs> about? He has a name tag that says Jesus. This is borderline <laughs> miracle on 34th Street level of obviously I'm Santa Claus. It's right. over the top. <laughs> yeah. And in this, he's playing a little cagey about being Jesus. And I don't understand why. <laughs> he has yeah. gotten, I will say this, as someone who's encompassed all of the encounter, I'm going to say oeuvre up to this point, he has gotten more and more coy about being Jesus as we've gotten to know him. Maybe he got burned. Maybe they watched that Futurama episode where God was like, you need a light touch. You know, you can't be too obvious. Otherwise, people will rely on you all the time. So you got to use like a gas station attendant. Well, I think maybe after the movie, there was a performance review. And, <laughs> you know, hey, listen, you're Jesus. Too obvious. God was like, I, I like the strategy. It worked pretty well for al almost everybody. But you lost Sting. <laughs> Sting did die. He did not turn his life over. Maybe you should don't play so uh, so easy to get. You know what? I would like more books of the Bible that show us Jesus's L's. You know, like uh. whenever he was trying to save somebody and then he just blew it. I want more books of the Bible with Sting in <laughs> I want books of the Bible where Jesus fails to heal and or help Sting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There was two moments in the movie that I actually cheered for. One was when the cop was revealed to be named uh, Officer Devell. Hey, awesome. come on now. <laughs> and then the second was when they ran out of bread. And Jesus was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not. He did not do a Jesus callback. He did a full on Jesus like, hey, yep. man, you know, you don't know who you're dealing with here. There were no fishes, but he didn't make more loaves. <laughs> God, that was funny. Oh, God, that's a, that's almost like a fucking Marvel Easter egg to the true it fans. Yep, like, yep, that's yep. what it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to cue the credits for us when Bruce Marciano shows up. And the encounter credits, I want to say, are somewhere between like True Detective season two and like a trailer for the television show you're about to watch. Yeah. See, this is this is where I, I think we screwed up by watching it on YouTube. Yeah, we didn't see the. <laughs> The opening credits i don't think no oh. we, we were watching it on youtube and there was a little button that said skip uh <laughs> intro oh and that's was, right and i was going to click on it <laughs> and then you were like this is a youtube video <laughs> and it just but skipped. then it skipped the intro anyway so <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah yeah <laughs> so i did not see this part yeah. yeah this this is where they get a little bit more overt about the jesus finally they're like all right this is uh, you know, if it can happen anywhere, anytime, uh, you can never turn back. This is spiritual. If you haven't seen The Encounter, the amazing movie on Pure Flix, apparently you guys actually have. Which Jordan has. Jordan has not. Okay. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with over preparing. Yeah. <laughs> and he speaks of himself in the third person now. Right. But this, the, the credits were like, this is about Jesus now. Gotcha. Jesus Christ. 
You'll never know where he strikes. He can hit anywhere. He's like the Riddler. He just shows up. He asks you a bunch of questions. And if you answer incorrectly, you go to jail. It's the opposite of the Riddler. Because the Riddler asks questions. This dude just says stuff. <laughs> the answerer. I'm about as agnostic as it gets. And both of the versions of this Bruce Marciano character, like in the movie and the show, I would just be like, all right, cool. I'm a Christian now. <laughs> I don't understand how you could get the fucking magic collage showing up without being like, man, whatever, you're Jesus. I'm moving yeah. on, right? Yeah. Like, this, we're done here. Re reality is not what I thought it was. Yeah, you did magic. I got nothing for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, bad guy, robbery guy. This is going to be, what's his name? Binky? What's the fucking head robber? Not crazy eyes and not main character. JD and Cal are the two main guys. J They're brothers, D. right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. This is where JD demands from Bruce Marciano, Jesus, where is Mr. Patel? Because they need, and I, I'm quoting the movie here, the password for the computer at this gas station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to take the gas station owner's Bitcoin or something. It's It's very not well thought out as a robbery plan. No. It seems as though what we're dealing with is some sort of gas station owner who keeps a lot of credit cards on file. And we know later on that he has a secret double life with extra passports we don't and shit know like that. that. <laughs> later on, we find that out. No, we don't know that. Yes, we do. <laughs> You know, I, Jesus opens the safe and he's like, this passports and d fake IDs and all this shit. So something's going on in this guy's computer, right? Maybe, but I don't know. I assumed there might be another explanation for that stuff being in the safe. Like what? Maybe kids just with fake IDs trying to buy yeah, beer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I used oh. to, I worked oh, at a that bar and people way more left sense. IDs and yeah, stuff Yeah, yeah, we always had a few IDs in the safe at a, at a bar. Then yeah. why is Cal? acting like it's such a big deal cal's an idiot cal is an idiot that's okay, true jordan i want to say jesus for like an hour jordan i am on your side i was like wait mr patel's a fucking international man of mystery and this show never fucking revisits it no no it seems so important to me that he was uh jason but he even says is this guy like jason Bourne?" It's, it seemed to me like certainly that is a possibility, but it was so sure. undersold in the show that I assume like <laughs> oh, there's probably some innocuous explanation for this stuff being in the safe. <laughs> Mr. Patel is actually 16 years old. <laughs> He's got to use a fake ID to buy beer at his own store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like we hinted at earlier, old lady upon seeing them immediately went and told a cop to come check out the gas station. So a cop comes in because the old lady told him she saw humans in a car and everything immediately goes insane. I just wrote in my notes, there was a firefight. <laughs> <laughs> Boondock Saints. Yeah, Defoe yeah. would have figured out this crime pretty quickly. Yeah, me and, me and Jordan were sitting there like, this is escalating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's on the fast track. I, that was that was an interesting bit of uh, TV writing to have the guy just fire immediately. <laughs> no, like, hey, we've got questions or comments or like, are you actually a cop? Just boom, 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 gunshots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think either of those are realistic. I don't think I don't think it's realistic that they'll just start shooting shots and another is like, I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's more of a comment than a question. I'm, I'm not talking about real life. I'm talking about screenwriting. <laughs> In real life, you wait until everybody leaves the store and then you stick a guy up. That's just how it should go. I don't think the cop would enter or try to enter the store if he looked in and saw three people in masks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was a weird tactic on his part. I think you might establish a perimeter or something. And <laughs> yeah. And I think he would have winked at the good guy with the gun and been like, you're going to handle this, right? And he you're my guy. Like, yeah, hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sneak you a secret phone and we're going to have a back channel <laughs> through the through the hostage okay. situation. Look, look, really look, close look, to that. look, old man, you're a little bit thick, but see if you can get in the vents. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a bunch of broken forties at the back and he's gotta walk over them in bare feet. <laughs> we have just we've stumbled on a better episode. Die hard, the Jesus one. <laughs> But no, it's actually a much more realistic good guy with a gun situation. He pulls out a gun, 
a young person grabs it and he gets killed by his own gun. So, hey, credit to Pure Flix. There's some realism in this television show. <laughs> oh, my God. I was. It happened so much faster than I thought. Like, a scene ago, I was like, that's going to be the good guy with the gun. And immediately, he's going to his ankle holster that he has. And then mm-hmm. he gets shot with his... I was so happy he got shot with his own gun. Like, the movie got foiled by itself trying to be that asshole thing. So good. From what I understand, actually, the NRA put out a press release about that scene and how unrealistic <laughs> it is compared to... <laughs> yeah. Good guys with guns never shoot themselves. This is propaganda <laughs> from the gun grabbers. Yeah, and- what would have been realistic is if he had brought his two-year-old and the two-year-old grabbed the gun out of his ankle holster and shot him. That would have been the most <laughs> likely c- real-world scenario. That was part of the press release. Yeah, 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 exactly. The NRA is really important about that. Yeah, yeah. this is liberal propaganda from <laughs> Pure Flix. Pure Flix by David A.R. White, liberal propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> Then the mass shooter bursts into the gas station, shoots the two-year-old who just shot his dad. It's a full cycle. That's the accurate thing that you want to show. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. We've we've written a reality TV show now. <laughs> the real world with guns? I would watch the shit out of the real world with guns. <laughs> All right. Now, up to this point, real quick, honest evaluation of how the leader is doing. Because I feel like he did not have control <laughs> JD's over the leader, any part right? of this. Yeah, yeah. JD is the leader. Okay. You got crazy guy, hacker, and leader. Yeah, okay. and then there's the then there's the wheel person Wheels. who is not involved and abandons them still later than she should. Oh yeah, and, yeah. She should have abandoned them way earlier. There's apparently a sign for like shit's gone bad, and, and there was no a one listens, and no mm. one paid attention to that yeah. at all. She did everything she could to yeah, warn them. Totally, Let's totally. See. She's a great wheel person. Yeah. yeah. If I was having a meeting with JD, I was like the Bobs, and we were having a meeting about this afterwards. Sure, sure. I, I'd want him to delegate a little bit better. I feel like that would be like, the thing that he could have done better. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Because I feel like he let people do far too much on their own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he, he gave people too much space to improvise oh, within yeah. their own characters. And I feel like maybe more of a solid hand could have kept things under control here's here's a here's Micro more manage of, more okay yeah, maybe a little said. by sometimes yeah. it's a good idea my performance review is team is too big <laughs> get rid of crazy dude he's <laughs> totally causing problems do you so have to have a loose cannon yeah. yes that guy there's no point for that you can you know, just not have one don't go in when there's like 18 customers no in the, store. the robbers union they make you have a loose cannon <laughs> that sounds true or it's the only thing that makes sense at all <laughs> There's regulations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a code of honor among thieves. <laughs> Who else is going to employ loose cannons? If they were doing this as part of my crew, let's say, like I ran crime in sure. the city. Sure. You're you're they're, a they're baby all... driver. You're Kevin Spacey and baby driver. They're right? all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's no, that's true. They're that's of, true. They're of no use to me as a, <laughs> as a criminal enterprise. As if this was an audition for yeah. like good jobs. Yeah. You guys fail. Yeah. <laughs> If you can successfully steal credit cards from a gas station, maybe steal maybe credit we cards. can maybe we can up you to banks. But until then, you're fucked. They need an entire episode where it's just them all meeting with Satan later as like a job review about this whole thing. <laughs> Much better, Officer Devell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now, young men, do you know where you failed? <laughs> all right. Well, the. So-called good guy with a gun just made it so much fucking worse for him and everybody else around him. So I'm going to pop some champagne and celebrate with a quick break. And then we'll be back with some more The Encounter TV series, episode one, The Heist. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, over the week or so that Noah's been gone, getting the teeth ripped out of his skull and then replaced with a torture device known as dentures, Heath and I have had pretty much our run of the place. And you know what that means? It means late night movie marathons, quadruple elimination video game tournaments, and all the sugary cereal we want. Yeah. No matter what. Mm-hmm. But now that we're grown-ups, that stuff isn't quite as fun as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Our, our late night movie marathons kind of... Ended early at like 8.30 and I fell asleep. Yeah, and, and we would have had that video game tournament, but our eyes aren't exactly what they used to be. We had to sit so close to the screen. Was, yeah, 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 we were very noisy. close, I think. But thanks to Magic Spoon, our cereal binges are on point. That's right. 
Because Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving, and only 140 calories per serving. Yeah, it's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Plus, you can build your own box. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. What I like to do, I like to combine the peanut butter and the cocoa for like a peanut butter cup extravaganza. And for me, I like to mash up fruity and frosted. So not everything holds up like when you were a kid, but Magic Spoon does. Just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code GAM at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash GAM and use the code GAM to save $5 off. Thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Now, uh, what do you think, Eli? Another pillow fight? Is your pillow filled with nickels again? It, yes. Then no. Dimes? They're lighter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're here today to honor a hero. <laughs> hero. Yeah. As many of you saw in the news, Tom saw a robbery in progress at the Piggly Wiggly on 4th and Main and sprang into action. Tom's the best hero. Tom! Yes. Turned a robbery worth less than $200 into a gunfight in a closed space. Uh, 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 Oh. Woo, woo, I guess. Utilizing a concealed handgun that is actually only legal in a few states. Uh, Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Anyway, Tom was shot to death and he's dead now, but I know his wife and children are deeply comforted knowing the mm, $44.18 in that register are safe. Or, well, they would have been, but they shot him and took the money. Woo? Are we? Woo? Yes, woo. Woo. And we're back. When we left off, the good guy with a gun thing backfired inside a fictional universe written by Republicans. And now (laughs) Bruce Marciano is going to get involved. He's the cashier. Or is he? We are going to find out for real who he is right now. He he runs up over to help him. He's like, I need to help that man. And he's like, no, you can't help him or else. And he, he's supposed to do this badass line. He goes, I've had worse days. And he might as well just go, like when I was crucified, I'm Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. All right. All right. He was referencing that. I was I was thinking the 40 days and 40 nights is what he was referencing. Ooh. You can't even bother Jesus with a day. <laughs> this is a barely a few hours. What? This is his first hostage situation? He's hung out with the devil for a while. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, But that does create a problem in the show, right? Because Jesus is like, hey, I don't care if you kill me. I'm Jesus. And so the robber, for no reason whatsoever, this would not benefit him in any way, shape, or form, is like, okay, well, if you help that guy, I'll kill you and a random lady. That's true. And that scares Jesus off. I gotta assume, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. That if the cashier was shot, he wouldn't have been hurt because he's Jesus. Yeah, well, that's that's safe to assume. Problem solved. Let the guy (laughs) shoot you. (laughs) (laughs) I have a larger issue that we need to address. One, how long has Jesus been working? Did he show up on time for his shift? (laughs) Right. Right? Yeah. Was he, is he a good gas station cashier? Like, is he doing all right? Is he like an agent in the Matrix where he can just like teleport into the cashier? Totally. Was Mm. the cashier even, was the cashier a regular dude who was embodied by Jesus? In which case, that's some fucking mind rape is what that is. Jesus is hurting a human being. He's not even supposed to be here today, actually. He's not even supposed to be here today. (laughs) That's some Wonder Woman 1984 shit right there. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Problematic. (laughs) I think we're canceling Jesus is what we're doing right now. Does Mr. Patel know that he employs Jesus? (laughs) (laughs) It would have been great if Mr. Patel came back in the middle of this and was like, I said we're not doing any of these Jesus skits that you want to do in the store. I told you not to do that. Not again. (laughs) 
I told you all you had to do was pound on the safe for it to open. And now you act like you're fucking magic all the time. Jesus, you're fired. You're fired. So, yeah, now that Jesus is properly put in his place, we get some dramatic shots. And these are of a security camera, a different security camera, and some pigeons. <laughs> Well, they were watching too. Yeah, the, the the establishing pigeons. I mean, there's no better way to metaphorically let you know everyone's watching than to have cameras, cameras, and pigeons. Dramatic yep. pigeon. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like they wanted to do that like woo gun fu thing, and they were like, we don't have enough money for that. We can do the birds <laughs> though, right? <laughs> well, when I got robbed at that gas station, I should tell you, when I hit the panic button, just the room filled with pigeons. Ooh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That makes sense. Okay. It's there like, might be something to this. It's like yeah. Legend of Zelda when you hit the chickens too many yeah, times. Yeah. Just a swarm it's of just pigeons. Just a swarm of pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> actually, funny story though, actually, when I did hit the panic button, nothing happened. Really? And, and I was really worried because I was like, that's supposed to be the panic button. So I hit it again and then like nothing happened. And so I called the non emergency police line. And you hit the panic button. Again. Yeah. And then after I called the non emergency police line, I get like the phone rings and it's the people from like the other side of the panic button. And they're like, hey, you hit the panic button. Is there a problem? Like, yeah, hey, I buddy. got robbed. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You having a good night so far? <laughs> Guy's gone, but I got robbed. It was, it was nuts. Yeah. The panic button just goes to like ADT or whatever, the alarm company. <laughs> Ah. Not a good panic button. <laughs> That's not great. Press one for English. Oh my God. <laughs> really? You have a menu at the beginning of this? When the police showed up, they called in. <laughs> they called into the, the station and they made me do like some gestures at them through the window so they knew it was me. <laughs> it was weird. It's like I was doing an interpretive dance at the cops. <laughs> I've always wondered if you're an ADT operator and 99.99% of your calls are, did you forget your password again, Carol? At a certain point, your tone becomes too casual when you're answering the phone or making those calls, right? And, yeah. Hey, how's you going? ADT again. Oh, a murder. I am so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I shouldn't have opened with a knock knock joke. <laughs> That's on me. I get the sense that they don't like differentiate between like a panic button and someone just, yeah, needing their code yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. just the same people at the call center. Or hey, whatever. bro, sorry about this, but secret of the private security industry, not that much crime happens. <laughs> sorry. Also, I've only known one person in my life who ever worked at one of those like uh, centers where those calls go to. And uh, he was someone who once tried to get me to do animal tranquilizer with him. <laughs> so that doesn't speak highly of their uh No, I spent employment. I spent a long time reading up on the nuclear missileers of the uh, army or whatever. Oh, the NORAD guys. They are fucking shit faced and drugged up all the time <laughs> because it's so boring. All you do is look at a nuclear missile and go, I hope that doesn't go anywhere. I think the analog is <laughs> us having this conversation because the show that we watched was so, so boring. boring. <laughs> you guys want to put in a test CD in case what it would look like if someone shot at Hawaii just for fun? Come on. You guys want to try one of those? <laughs> we'll see what happens, bro. Ugh, I could not love more the way JD tries to control the situation. I keep going back to this guy's leadership skills because he doesn't talk anywhere near as much as the guy willing to shoot everybody. Crazy guy. No, he does yeah. not. Yeah, and he it's like, not. man, that's your one job as the leader of the group. You know that the hacker guy, who's your brother, is going to go off and do his thing. Right. Your only job is to keep the loose cannon guy from murdering everybody, and the <laughs> moment something goes wrong, he's murdered people, he's fired at cops, and yeah. he's got hostages lined up in front of the fucking window. He has hostages in, in three seconds he's just like oh, we're doing hostages i saw this in a movie we're doing i'm escalating to hostages i don't even know what i'm saying right now i don't know lady you stand in the window with today's newspaper or something i don't really know how it works we're doing hostages lady, lady put a dime on the window for scale the thing that i you know you hear this about like child raising you know parenting sometimes sure. like if you you're thinking about hitting your child that means that you made a mistake like four stages back totally and i think that with this robbery the fact that the loose cannons getting out of control means like the leader jd made a mistake four stages totally back. totally yeah. if you are yeah. if you're the leader of this and you're hiring your crew you're putting your crew together mm. obviously your brother best hacker in the world sure nailed it yeah driver let's seems not go best hacker in the world well, but okay driver seems pretty good <laughs> 
he hired the wrong loose cannon because you need to yeah. have a loose cannon who mm-hmm. doesn't secretly want to take over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so important. Yes. Yeah, you need a you need a Madsen loose cannon who's yes. just going to cut an ear off, but he's not going to ruin the whole operation. Yeah, you got to know your role. Team player, yeah, stay in your yeah. lane. Stay <laughs> exactly. in the lane. You're just loose cannon, man. You just scare people yeah, 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 verbally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, the reason you're here is because if anybody's going down, god damn, it's going to be you. <laughs> you're going to cause a problem, and that's going to allow us to get away. Yeah. You make people afraid by committing worse crimes than we're willing <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. Look, I'm a great guy, honestly. But you're part now I'm of picturing this. the overly like friendly loose cannon who like didn't really deserve the job. He shows up and he's like, "Oh yeah, they call me Crazy Horse McGee. Who wants a snow cone?" And they're like, "All right, man, you fucked this. You've really fucked this for us." Listen, guys, I'm really sorry, but uh, when you hired me, it was a couple months ago. I've been in AA since then, so I've been really kind of handling my shit, and so. I'm not that loose anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm a sorry. much tighter cannon now. I'm a tighter cannon. I'm a much tighter cannon. I feel like a really friendly loose cannon might be way scarier. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm really sorry about this. I think you're a great person. Honestly, mm-hmm. we've talked a little bit, and now I'm going to shoot you in the leg. I'm super sorry. I'm real bummed about it. I'm real bummed about it, but your shin's gone hey, now. look, these uh, these guys are robbing this place, and I know that we're all in a very tense situation. Totally. But I, I opened a Roth IRA for you. That's really <laughs> nice of you. What's coming next? What's coming next? Oh, no. Hey, man, the only thing I love more than you is cutting off ears. Can I get a high five? Come on, let me get a high five. <laughs> You don't even know what the real goal here, man, is. I'm going to cause a new housing crisis. That's what I'm going to do. Stealing all these credit cards. Again, maybe. (laughs) So now Bruce slash God is showing Cal, who is our good guy, bad guy, to the back where the data is. And he's he's lecturing him about not murdering a guy, which I think we can all agree is totally Jesus of him. Yeah, yeah, I d- I really really got freaked out by the reveal that he sent the grandma there. Cranston. He sent Mrs. But like when he argued that he sent Mrs. Cranston there as like their first chance to say no, mm-hmm. which I, I mean, <laughs> in all honesty, is just a test of how good your crew is. Like they literally said, <laughs> yeah. "We've been made." Twice. Twice. <laughs> so you yep. just go. You've been yep. made. Yeah. Be there no longer. Uh-huh. It's not hard, right? Yeah, the job relies, or it depends on you not having everyone know who you are. Yeah, so that's not even a morality test for Jesus. That's a competency test. Mm-hmm. Like, are you a good robber? It's an intelligence test. Yeah, yeah. totally. Like, are you even worth saving? And like, the answer should be no. If you're sitting in that car and Cranston comes over and is like, hello, young man, I, I'm a good friend of your grandma or whatever the fuck. <laughs> like, even if you do the best robbery... Yeah. You're still in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hello, young men. Just so you know, I am a police drawer and I happen to draw faces exactly like the ones that you guys walk around with. Even if it doesn't deteriorate into a hostage situation, you're still going to end up like you're going to get questioned about it. Yeah. Someone's going to put you at the scene. Yeah. And it's going to be Mrs. Cranston. Exactly. Or Jesus. You're fucked. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yes, it was obvious they should have stopped at that point because of Mrs. Cranston. But totally, Jesus, th- this is uh, it's on him too, partially in my head. Like totally, he lets a lot of murder happen while he's being subtle and vague with signs like that. Obviously, it doesn't work every time. Just intervene. Now there's hostages. Yeah, no, this is Twilight Zone Jesus. This is not a Jesus with any kind of control of the situation. This is a Jesus who's creating a fucking Rod Serling morality play in order to teach (laughs) one dude a lesson while the collateral damage is, regardless of whether or not that guy fucking lives, those people are psychologically fucked with for the rest of their lives, man. Yeah. Jesus doesn't go around touching their heads and being like, you won't have PTSD from this. Well, it reminds me of uh, that verse, uh, Romans 3.12. Uh-huh. Would you like to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually was the book of Job. <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, Jesus could have made this a house call the night before, right? He could have just knocked on Cal's door and been like, hey, I'm Jesus. Easy. This is your height and weight. Um, Don't do a robbery tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, because the other real conclusion to draw here is that Cal was not going to change whatsoever until it was revealed the guy was Jesus, literally. Yep. And he fought back for a while. So if Jesus just revealed he was real like a week ago, 
or let's say before his, he lost his fucking job but I, that led him to the situation we're in. Right. right. But I would suggest that also that Cal isn't going to accept any of this unless he's in an emotionally heightened situation where there's no other way out. Ooh. <laughs> Which is an even more fucked up thought. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus is a bad BDSM scene partner. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, in order to convert people to Christianity, we really have to orchestrate situations that leave them into a situation where they have no other choice but to believe in Jesus. That's the only way. Yeah. Like yeah. you want to you want to get out of a murder rap? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will heal the person you yeah. murdered. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jesus is the payday loans of belief systems. Yeah, in this Yeah, you still this, gotta do two years. In this show, he's an extortionist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the interest is high. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk here about Cal's skepticism of Jesus. Okay, so he takes him into the back, right? Jesus tells him his full name, his height, his weight, and his birthday, and Cal is still like I don't know. I'm keeping the mask on. You are friends with my dad in the joint. Yeah. That kind of like, I guess, you know, some denial is makes sense. I mean, you're not just going to be like, okay, it's Jesus right away. Mm -hmm. Like, that's unreasonable. You got to give somebody <laughs> like, I think the problem was with the dialogue is they kept talking. Once the guy is like enough Jesus for me, I'm going to sit with that for a while and just really kind of <laughs> process it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Now Jesus is real. What else does this mean for my life? Sure. You know, yeah. and uh, the answer is probably I got to shoot Jesus just to see, <laughs> just to see, just to see. It's him and me. Mm -hmm. Nobody will know. Mm -hmm. He won't even know he's dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, the stakes are bizarre because like there's two options, really. And that is that like this person is Jesus or this person is wildly insane. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yes, there's only two options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the case of this incarnation of it, where you know the gas station attendant, you have other problems like the cops and the whole hostage situation. But in the movie at the diner, like when he's he's either Jesus or a complete lunatic. Yeah. It's in your best interest to not believe that he's Jesus because <laughs> if he's best... a complete lunatic, he's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, can you, okay, so if this was, if we're going to go with this is real life happening and Jesus isn't real, how does a human being do what this person has done? And the only answer is he has been stalking Cal for months, right? Mm. like finding out every piece of information that he can, getting into the situation, finding out that they're going to do a job two weeks earlier, getting a job there, inspiring Mr. <laughs> Patel to go on vacation and then pulling this whole morality play mm -hmm. and if he just got shot one time in the leg we'd all know he's full of shit uh -huh. that's all i'm saying yeah. oh. if he gets shot and he's just like ah i'm a, oh, I'm a long con really mentalism I'm like, guy i do mentalism fuck you, Jesus. <laughs> i was doing a play <laughs> you guys are assholes oh why is it that season three of you <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people say shoot your shot, but they don't mean it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, now Cal is going to hack into the computer. This will be one of my favorite hacking <sighs> program names we've ever had here on God Awful Movies. He is running the safe cracker program on the credit card safe program. <laughs> yep. The name of the program is safe cracker. Um, also, <laughs> I want to talk about just the computer that he's at. He's at the computer in the back of this gas station. There's an icon for crypto, first of all. Oh, yeah, of course. There's also a computer icon for, it just says, algorithms. What the fuck would that be? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's got a, He's living a double life. Mr. Patel yes. is stealing credit card numbers. He's got this whole crypto scam going on. I think this is also borderline a racist plot line where he's one of the scammers <laughs> who's doing the Nigerian email thing. Like this is this is an intense situation. Yeah, he do you really have to have a South Asian name too and be the the owner of the like this is the problem of a poo right here built into the movie. Yeah, mm. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't put it past pure flicks to not descend into tropes. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. But they're pure tropes. Okay. They're pure <laughs> tropes. Yeah. So he's, he runs 
safe cracker the program and he's like all right i click run would you like some help with stealing these credit card numbers (laughs) clippy pops up yeah but what is he hacking right now like there's a a word document with the safe combo typed yep. out in it, and he's like mm-hmm. decrypting that word document. That's where all the credit cards. Yeah, that's are. the part of this this heist that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But the, he focuses on the safe in a second, so it seems I don't know. It does seem like the computer is going to be hacked, and somehow that's going to open the safe. Yes, yeah. right. I guess yeah. that was the idea I had. But he's still trying to run safe cracker after Jesus opens the safe. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it seems to imply that there's something else they're looking for. And they do say credit cards a couple sure, times. Sure, but that doesn't make sense. Right. And so like, the, I guess the assumption that you would have is what you said earlier, Jordan, which is like, there's a list of people's credit cards there and you could take their information. Something. Or something. It's got to be. Yeah. But yeah. It's huh. Otherwise, unclear. this score isn't worth shooting a good guy with a gun. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. I still would say it's not. Probably. You're not going to get away with this. What is in? Well, that raises an interesting question, Dan. What's your level of score that's worth shooting a good guy with a gun? Are we talking two million? It has nothing to do with a gas station. <laughs> really, that. Well, that, I mean, that's obvious. Yeah. I feel like if, if we're in the two million range, we're not knocking over a gas station. No. It would have been cool if Windows started updating in the middle of his thing and he had to stop. <laughs> oh, no. No, delete. Stop. Was it a cathode ray monitor? <laughs> it, it, it was a cathode ray monitor, like straight up those old timey. Yeah. Like I would have played lemmings on that computer. <laughs> so this is also where Jesus does his first magic trick, right? Cal is not impressed by the name and height and weight and the fact that he lost his job and hasn't told his wife that he got fired. So this is where, as you hinted earlier, he Fonzies the safe open for him. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey. But there's no money in the safe. There's just yeah. like random, like we said before, passports and credit he, he cards. He said it's what Mr. Patel wants to keep the most safe. Right. Which I even could interpret as other people's identification. Sure. Like, right. why wouldn't you want to safeguard stuff that other people, you know, the passport someone else needs to come pick back up? No, or and that's a really good question. Here's another question for you. If that's all you're keeping in your safe, clearly you have much more space. Why are you keeping your cash in the freezer? Because, because the robbers, <laughs> you could robbers also gonna, put your cash in the safe. The robbers are going to look in the safe. Why wouldn't they look in the freezer after they've You'd already ransacked the safe? <laughs> what do you mean I'd never do I'm that? I'm going to want Why an ice pop as I'm leaving the robbery. <laughs> I'm going to open the canned green beans with a can opener if I didn't get any money from the safe. I'm going to find that fucking money. Also, it's absolutely stupid that there's this freezer in the back office of the gas station when there are freezers. <laughs> 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 The entire wall right. of a gas station is a cooler, and like, what's, also, be- what's behind that cooler is a room that is a walk-in cooler. You do not need a, a little one tiny little freezer with one of each item as backup. He's yeah. got yeah, a mini ridiculous. fridge. He's a, he's a dorm guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a mini fridge for money. <laughs> and this is where Jesus says to him that Jesus is like, by the way, the cash is in the freezer. And Cal, he, right? Cal's the guy back here trying to oh, yeah. hack the hacking. He's like, okay, why are you helping me? And Jesus says, like, okay, well, if I, I help you rob the store, will you stop robbing the store? <laughs> and Cal's like, no, what? <laughs> You'll need to do way more magic tricks before. I'm, I'm still not on board with you being Jesus. I think you're the mentalism guy. And he asked Jesus to do a miracle. And then the miracle that he does appears to be like, the bing bong sound of the safe cracker program finishing running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not really a miracle. That's just timing. It's amazing. They, they, he programmed a trumpet fanfare to, to go <laughs> off at the end of his hacker safe, the program program. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I really do believe that Christians have abandoned the Bible and have switched to being like, what if Jesus was more of a Jedi? <laughs> you know, like, all right, so he can open safes with his mind. All right, so he says stuff like, I'm going to help you even though it's a crime. And you're like, what? I'm getting my mind blown. He's Jediing. That's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. This isn't the Jesus of Job. This isn't the, the God of Job. This isn't the God who's like, oh, why do bad things happen to bad people? Because fuck you. That's why. <laughs> well, even, that's why bad things happen. Because I'm fucking God. Well, it's like even. He sent a cyclone. 
the Jedi <laughs> thing, even let's take a step back. Like, spoiler alert, at the end of this, Jesus pulls the bullet out of the good guy with a gun. <laughs> yes. And it's just a complete ripoff of the Matrix. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. It's just the end Digs of Digs his thing. hand and pulls Matrix it out. Two. It's because yeah. it's the code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> it's, he's just Neo. Oh, how amazing would it have been if he had reached his hand in and just pulled out his liver and been like, oh, fuck, sorry, I don't know modern medicine. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Oh, ah, I was thinking about the four humors. I'm pushing it back in. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, how's you do, okay, I, buddy? I do think there's something to that that's really interesting. It is that, like, trying to recharacterize Jesus as like things that are more reminiscent of popular tropes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. There's something to that. No, there's a, there's a definite destruction of that biblical character of Jesus where that idea of like, Hey, guess what? Also fuck you. Some of it's inconvenient. <laughs> right. Yeah. The Jesus of, of this circumstance is like doing everything he can to help. And, but also like, allow you to have free will to make the choice but despite the fact that he's allowing you to have free will means you don't and so there's this whole dumb thing going on instead of that classic biblical god who just says shit happens go fuck yourself i'm god i don't remember that verse you haven't read job enough okay he gets pissed yeah i like how passive aggressive jesus starts just listing obnoxious details oh, about totally. Cal here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you really got to tell your wife that you got laid off. I know you got laid off and you know, you should really talk. To, you should really go down on her more too. I would say. Yeah, Just, yeah, uh, yeah, totally. my guess. I watched you masturbate when you were 14 is might as well be what he said. <laughs> It's weird. You do a stranger a lot more than most adults do. I mean, I get it when you're a kid, you want to do a stranger every now and then, but like you're a grown up now. Just, just bang one out. Anyways. Uh, so meanwhile, back in the gas station, it's exhausting and lefty too. It takes for, come on, man. You know, I'm watching jerk off in the closet like Jesus does. <laughs> that is in the Bible almost. So meanwhile, back in the gas station, crazy bad guy has a cell phone now and SWAT is here. At the gas station robbery, SWAT is here. <laughs> yep. was, my favorite part was how much of the hostage situation we skipped over to just see them opening the door a crack and getting handed a phone. I feel like it takes a little <laughs> bit more before you get handed a phone. You know, like there has to be some sort of conversation without a phone. Like, yeah. hey, give us a fucking phone. You or, know, like something. Or maybe like a robot comes and gives you the phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all we've seen is a fucking small town rent-a-cop show up and then all of a sudden there's a fucking 1980 cell phone with gordon gecko holding the other end of it <laughs> as somebody who's lived through a situation like this it again does not ring true it is like <laughs> every like a gas station robbery is something that is pretty easy to pull off kind of because nobody cares no yeah and if you everybody's there, insured you're trained to just let people have whatever they want totally and the people who are robbing the store usually know that that that's what the training that's is. that's the right. point <laughs> yeah that's why you rob a gas station it never escalates to this and that's why it's like is are, are they trying to get the nuclear codes is there some other stakes to this and they never make it clear and it's frustrating no it's when not the good. phone came in i was like bullshit bullshit <laughs> it would never get to this point no i mean it honestly makes you think that jd's entire plan is based around some knowledge of mr patel's secret life right which is like <laughs> that is a far more interesting story than jesus fixing cal's issues you're not yeah. wrong a regular therapist seems like they could fix cal's issues just like <laughs> hey you have issues with your dad that's the problem that we're dealing with here yeah. you need to focus more on your fucking son and the positive side of your life and then the the, the fucking how did jd know that this dude's living a double life if he is <laughs> if he is <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Jesus is trying to get like he's trying to convince Cal that like yeah he's, before he's the not third a crazy act. person yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's like uh, he's like hey you know I did know your dad and I still do he yeah. loves you he loves There's what the- are you talking about and then he points to the to the wall that he a magic and it blows Cal's goddamn mind in cray in cray yeah. we don't see what it is we just see them look at the wall and it's like what <gasps> what is it <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, right. Jesus says it's been there the whole time. And I was like, the 
password one two three is written on the wall. <laughs> and Jesus, like that's his big sign. I was thinking it was maybe the original like Spider Man poster from uh, back in like two thousand one that had the twin towers on it that got recalled. <laughs> it's, it's Honus Wagner's rookie card. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, it's Otis Wagner's How did rookie you find that? That's wow. worth a million dollars. He was a serious <laughs> racist and an abuser, but like really good at baseball. This is a weird conversation we're having. Anyway, yeah, so there's some kind of there's some kind of big sign on the wall. But uh you know, we're not gonna find out what it is quite yet. Before we find out, we're gonna take one more quick break and then we'll be back to reveal the it turns out least impactful cliffhanger ever constructed in the big finale of The Encounter, Episode 1, The Heist. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. And for just a moment, we'd like to talk to our older listeners. That's right, youngins. Go ahead and step out of the room. We need a second with the old folks. Don't worry, you can come back in a bit. Hey, maybe uh, cancel somebody while you're out there. The Hamburglar? He seems problematic, right? Work on that. There you go. Yeah, perfect. So uh, now that it's just us older folks, a couple of things. First off, when technology, quote, breaks, 99.99% of the time, it's because you're using it wrong. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the remaining 0.01% of the time, you just need to turn it on and back off again. Yeah. And if you're using the internet, you need a VPN from IPVanish. Now, now, old people, put away your catheters. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. And for listeners of the show, IPVanish is offering an incredible 65% off. Just $349 for the first month or $3149 for the year. You know, Thirty-one forty-nine, the amount you paid for your house when you bought it. <laughs> so just go to ipvanish.com slash awful and claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just three forty-nine dollars a month or thirty-one forty-nine dollars a year. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and their current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual deal. IPVanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. So show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash awful to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Okay, young people, you can come back in now. All right. So you guys cancel the Hamburglar? What'd you do? Oh, wow, they did. They did. Yeah, he's on Tucker Carlson this Thursday. Look at that. Yep, every time. Okay, everyone, down on the ground. Money in the bags. Don't you see, Johnny? This isn't what your father wanted for you. And it's not what I want for you. Maybe, but this is the life I have. Johnny, we are trying to do a goddamn it robbery might be here, the man. the life you have, but the life you have isn't the life you need to have to have the life you want. That was nothing! That didn't mean anything! What do you know about the life I want? Except for what you want my life to want to have the life you need. Armed robbery! In progress. Really need you to you focus up right need now. Want the life, want life, want you have want, but I'll want the life you need till you need the life I want you to want me to want you. All right, need. all right, I'm out. Everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And now JD is trying to negotiate safe passage to mexico that's awesome with the local police negotiator guy that apparently got called in i absolutely love that well he's trying to negotiate safe passage to canada because he wants a northern coyote and then in an even more confusing sentence he says you know what i mean which implies that he was like i want a professional coyote and then the person on the other end of the phone was like, do you mean Wiley Coyote from the cartoons? Because we can't get you a cartoon coyote. <laughs> Wiley is very unprofessional. <laughs> I believe they said professional coyote yeah. at one point, yes. which yeah. which was confusing to me because is there any world where you want an amateur coyote? Is there a licensing bureau? Or just a, yeah, a coyote just a regular, enthusiast? A, a coyote is a coyote. I feel like you don't have like... 
What is that? Is somebody like I'm a moonlighter as wanna, a coyote? I, I want an avant-garde coyote. <laughs> I'm, a, wanna... I'm the Uber driver of coyotes. Is okay, what I am. But regardless <laughs> of how good or bad the coyote, why would you? That's so involved. Why would you want somebody like ferreting you across a border like that? You're walking through stretches of land. You wouldn't like just fly to somewhere. Or? You, you know what would be great too is like. Ah, yes, we'll get you a coyote, and it's an FBI agent <gasps> pretending to be a coyote. Right? What? What? <laughs> Law enforcement agency has a good relationship with a good coyote. Yeah. A good coyote <laughs> is not known by a law enforcement agency. <laughs> That's, That's what makes a good coyote good at it. By definition. You know what I think? I think what happened here is that the, in the, the writer's room, they realized, like, all right, it's unrealistic if they're asking for a plane full of gas. <laughs> yeah, right. That doesn't like, sound right. <laughs> that's silly. We're not going from a fucking gas station to DB Cooper. It's right, not right. happening. Gas yeah. up the chopper. And let's get out <laughs> yeah, of here. Yeah, exactly. We want a chopper to fucking. No, we're robbing a gas station. We want a suite in the Excella Express <laughs> down to Jacksonville, and then we'll take a bus to. Near the Texas Mexico border. I want an Uber X. Do you hear me? An Uber X. I assume they're in California, right? Yeah, it, they have to be in California, but it doesn't sound like they want to go to Mexico. Right? No. I don't know. I thought they asked to go to Mexico with a coyote. Oh, did they? I, I thought so I, too. I, th I thought it was, I thought Eli just told us that it was a Canadian a northern coyote. coyote. Yeah, yeah, Eli says a lot of things. I thought it was a northern coyote. I thought I heard northern coyote. Well, no. okay. Number one, I was willing to go along with you because I am a trusting person, but northern coyote sounds fucking crazy. To I want me. a union coyote. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a tundra wolf to take me to Ottawa. <laughs> the reason that I thought it was California is just uh it felt like it and then also the movie Jesus has a uh, a driver's license. Oh, okay. He's got a California, <laughs> a California driver's license. Driver's license. Oh, yeah, yeah. California Jesus? Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 And so I just assume like, oh, this is just Bruce Marciano Jesus is in California. That's the California Jesus. All right. <laughs> now, tracks. that raises a whole nother question. That raises a whole nother question. Does Jesus have all 50 state IDs? Should he be in any state at any given point in time? Ooh. Maybe that's who Mr. Patel makes it's fake IDs for. Mr. Patel. Oh, he, shit. Mr. Patel is Jesus' fake ID guy? It's his handler. <laughs> yeah. It's like Jason born again. <laughs> but that brings us back to the question of, is Jesus inhabiting a regular person's body? Or is he creating a brand new human being? out of his own essence. Well, it's tough to say from the medium of storytelling of the the film because he looks exactly the same in the movie. Sure. And he has an ID that's Jesus and it looks a lot <laughs> like him and it's Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It says Jesus. Yeah, so he has a like he went to the DMV. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> yeah. average height 5 foot 6 of Santa Monica. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, no, no totally. Yeah. <laughs> One Galilee Road. Nazareth Galilee. Birthplace <laughs> unknown coming up to the place is Jesus Christ. He is an organ donor. That's nice. Cool. That He's is an organ nice. donor. I already have a donkey license. Does that transfer? No. It, okay, fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's a class D. That was actually one of the reasons that he was uh, crucified is he didn't have a license to ride that donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got into a minor accident. <laughs> This is also where Jesus reveals the cliffhanger from before the, amazing, the commercial break for us. Amazing cliffhanger, indeed. Which is, he has made not one, but two vision boards of Cal's life. The first one is the vision board where Cal doesn't listen to him about how okay, to live sorry. his life. And it's he's, not, you, you say vision board, it's not like a fucking hologram and Jesus is showing him like some amazing spiritual magic. It's literally a cork board with like the little things running across it and push pins. Yeah, it's like a conspiracy theory but, yeah, yeah. Uh, of his life. Yeah. It's, you know, the, like it's the Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny meme. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what it is. It's it's him being like, no, you don't get it, man. See, your life started here. Your dad was kind of an asshole. And that's where we wound up. If dude. you don't if you don't swear absolute fealty to me, life will be bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, bro, you don't even want to see the pictures on this that says if you didn't follow me. Also, you don't even want to fucking know. Bro. I understand that, like, the whole religious conception is you give your life to God, you know, like, mm -hmm. I get that. 
it comes sure. off wrong when it's an individual saying it. Give your life to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it's a personified person. It's creepy as hell. You know who else says that? Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Shang Tsung is me. also a give your life to me this guy. This literally was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I had a soul sucking joke and everything. Ooh, too bad. Too bad. I'm coming to Chicago. You guys wait there. You guys wait in Chicago. I'm coming there. I'm going to get to all the Mortal Kombat references first. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. I'm Sub-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So meanwhile, Mouseketeer, which is what I've called JD in my notes, is is back up at the front of the store asking for, I don't know, a rocket ship or whatever he's demanding at this point. Real quick. We did you call him a planet. Mouseketeer because JD sounds like JT and you were referring him to Justin Timberlake? Did you say Justin Timberlake? I believe I did say Justin Timberlake. Okay. That's because I'm <laughs> British by birth. <laughs> That's not true. That's not even true at all. So I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm sorry, I lied to you like that. I'm just nervous. I made up a lot of things just now. I don't think British people say CH for J either. I, I just... believe that you are Justin Timberlake, sir. <laughs> no, I call him the Mouseketeer because in this scene, he yells for the first time. And when he does, his voice goes like this. <laughs> so he'll spend the rest of the movie talking like this. I found it very distracting. Are we going to start making fun of people whose voices crack? <laughs> we also get a little more negotiating here with the negotiator guy and so jd is saying i know you can do better than that like you're you're breaking my balls my balls i wanted so much more hammering with this guy yeah before young up it, it was pretty I, I how it's local cops whatever it's just some guy who's like yeah, Steve, your negotiator guy, I don't know. He's probably going to ask for like a pizza or something. You figure it out. <laughs> I wish that this had just turned into like that Denzel movie, The Inside Man. <laughs> 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 like it just gets real intense with the negotiator. Or the Sam Jackson negotiator with Kevin Spacey. All of a sudden, they just show up out of nowhere. This is the second Kevin Spacey <laughs> reference on this I podcast. I have no so idea why. Look, it's Baby Driver. It's the nego It's not my fault. I didn't write the Jesus TV show. It's Jesus' fault. That is Jesus' fault again. <laughs> <laughs> They're both canceled. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was not enough negotiation fun. It's just an evergreen kind of thing to have on a show. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the back and forth, like ridiculous, sure. ridiculous demands. You know, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him on the line. Keep him on the line. All right. Okay. Real quick. Real quick question. You're in the situation where you're being robbed in real life. I've been right? there. All of a sudden, you're taken hostage. Mm -hmm. What's your ask from a negotiator? Wait. Ooh. Wait. wait you're a hostage? The hostages get to ask, get to ah, ask for stuff? Ah, no. That's not true. Hostages get to ask for, like, pizza and shit. So what oh, is I your... You do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to be in the hostage situation. You're about to get Stockholm syndrome like a motherfucker. And right. you're going to be like, this guy is actually just fighting for the little guy. And the fucking cops outside are the man. I'm trying to make it through this situation. This guy is Ooh. now my buddy. Okay. What are you asking for? We're I want some of the good cocaine from the evidence room. All right. Ooh. You can't have that. <laughs> I want it. Listen, listen, you know I can't do that. You know I can't do that, man. <laughs> All right, the bad cocaine from the evidence room. A specimen cup full of John Ham's semen. All right, well that's not that's not hard. Wait, John Ham's semen is that <laughs> and what I the heard? bad cocaine. I want a <laughs> Yep, I want a specimen cup full of John Ham's semen. We can get you John Ham's bad semen. <laughs> not the good stuff. Not the good stuff. That we keep in the evidence locker for real. I'm going to need a professional coyote. Ooh, all right. <laughs> if I were in that... As a hostage, you want the... Yeah. Listen, I want the escape guy. Yeah. The hostage taker can go fuck himself. I want a coyote now. No, because if I were in this situation and I were in the gas station, I wouldn't want anything because they have cigarettes and booze. Like, I just have a party. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff already yeah. built in. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, 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 me sure, the, sure, me sure. the hostage taker could uh, party. There's candy. That's a good point. No one's no one's going to blame you if you steal a, a thing of cigarettes and yeah. smoke it with the guy. They're going to be like, hey, listen, you did what you needed to do to survive. You should take advantage of it. I'm taking a bunch of scratch offs with me. I'm going to win money. Totally. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> also, another thing, too, like maybe this is bad advice, but this is what I was always led to believe and understand is that like 
someone robbing a gas station is not going to hurt you. Yeah. That is an escalation of whatever crime that they're committing that they are. It's not worth it to them. Totally. It would be nuts. So if you are in a situation and someone tries to take you hostage, like tries to take you off the premises, mm-hmm. just don't go. Yeah. No, no, they're no. They're not going <laughs> yep. to. Don't just, Look, no, no, no. Second offense on robbing yeah. a gas station. You're still doing two to five. Yeah. Attempted kidnapping is 20 to life yeah. for sure. If you go, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. If you don't go, go, they're probably not going to hurt not gonna you. They're not going to cause a problem. No. They don't want that. Just go limp, shit yourself, whatever you got to do. Don't go. Yeah. 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 Hey. That's what I would have done if I were one of these people. They came for $85 and some airheads. They are not here for first degree manslaughter. Totally. It's yeah. like it's like all cop chases <laughs> where you see the cops chase somebody and you're like, is, what are you going to do? You might kill like four people for to stop this guy from getting a hundred bucks. Let's move on with our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Catch him later. No more chases. No chasing. You have his license plate. <laughs> Oh, we're going to do a pit maneuver for a hundred bucks. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that the cops in this situation would even know that like they're part of escalating this to a hostage situation. Not- and they wouldn't do this. Let's just add this into it. Okay. This cop is coming into this gas station knowing immediately that those people are shooting at him. This is a fucking gas station. What if he hits something? True. What if he hits one of the wires? Now there's fucking gas going everywhere. We're fucked in this situation. Let him go, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just take the L. Bad prioritizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of good advice on policing. (laughs) One of the things you're known for. one of the things I'm known for. But the point is that Cal is convinced by the two vision boards and so he's on the good guy side now so he's he's gonna start by knocking out crazy eyes yeah that was weird well the real secret is jesus <laughs> if but, you're but, talking about vision boards yeah. so, so yeah. yeah he had the, the 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 collage that was like the bad collage it's like if you don't go with me this is what's gonna happen you're gonna be in prison yeah you're fucked ghost of christmas future exactly yeah and then like if you do hey you get to get out before your son is able to talk or whatever the fuck sure you can have a good life if you just go along with me find me the biggest christmas goose and then so cal is like fuck yeah i'm in then they use god as a distraction yeah in order to get the bad guy yeah (laughs) yeah who is better at creating a distraction than god the loose cannon (laughs) comes is like hey what's going on back here and then Jesus is like down the hallway <laughs> and that's when Cal jumps on him. Like Jesus and Cal set that up. Yeah, we're going to run a two-man game yeah. on this guy. <laughs> we're going to make sure <laughs> that we neutralize the threat. <laughs> Jesus is going to get down behind him on his hands and knees and Cal's going to push him into the pool. You know, classic yes, high Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Classic bit. And then they tie him up and put like tape on his mouth, and Jesus is basically like giving him a thumbs up. Yeah, they're like having fun together. Jesus is like, ah, oh, we got him all bound and gagged. This is so fun, right? We're the, I'm the Messiah. We're having we fun. Nailed it. Here's the thing about storytelling that Christians absolutely do not get: there has to be at some point in time an actual delineation of what kind of powers the person has. Yep. You know, like if you're gonna give Jesus powers eventually I'm going to have to know where they begin and end. Otherwise, there's no point to this story whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? There's no rule. They do yeah. not establish rules. I am bothered by that. Yeah. yeah. So so what are Jesus' other powers? The storyboards for this episode might as well be, there's no point to this story whatsoever. Totally. Totally. What? Because what, if Jesus could have done more... Why didn't he? Mm. If the goal was salvation, this could have been handled infinitely earlier. Mm. If it's because of his dead dad deciding to accept Jesus Christ, why didn't Jesus go right from there to then? Did Loose Cannon get a chance? Loose Cannon didn't get a chance at all. (laughs) Loose Cannon was fucked from the beginning. Jesus didn't seem to be talking to Loose Cannon. I mean, the ultimate (laughs) creator of this entire job has to be Jesus if Jesus was there since the beginning. Yep. You're saying he's the Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is Kaiser Soze. So got it, buddy. <laughs> Jesus. Is, oh, is Bruce Marciano is walking away and his limp disappears. The holes in his hands heal up. <laughs> totally. Come on. <laughs> JD Way was Kobayashi moving. the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, so they've tied up crazy eyes, and this is where Carl is going to have his like weird stare down with JD, where he's like, I'm doing the right thing, and he like pushes him out of the way so that Jesus can lovingly, really, really tenderly and lovingly heal good guy with a gun's tummy wound. Well, like Neo, he pulls the bullet out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a real bummer. <laughs> so we watched, we watched that happen, and then... I love JD is still doing the robbery in his head at this point. He watches a bullet (laughs) be magically removed from a man's belly by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he's like, okay, but I still want like cigarettes and candy and my lot of tickets or something. (laughs) They have to talk him down a little bit more. Think about what you could steal from Jesus. You could get Jesus to give you powers. I I'm fairly certain Jesus is a leprechaun in this scenario. So there's probably a pot of gold at the end. You can figure it out. If you answer Jesus's <laughs> riddle, he'll fuck you. Exactly. That's what they say. I was watching this and I was like, well, prosecution of this is now completely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple witnesses of complete miraculous events. No one is a reliable witness. Uh-uh. No one. It, like This is never going nope. to work. No. Nope. They would cut a plea deal so goddamn fast. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Here's okay, what we're going to get this person on the stand saying that... Uh, the clerk pulled a bullet out of the guy's stomach. <laughs> and uh, gavel, yeah. mistrial. We're done. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, they finally all give up on the robbery, including JD. He finally gets talked down. They agree to give up. So now we cut into the future where Cal is telling the story of this whole thing to other prisoners in jail. He's giving a little TED talk while in jail in the future. I wanted so badly for one guy to stand up and just be like, dude, you're fucking lying. Just say you robbed a gas station, man. Like, you reckon this meeting. (laughs) Yeah, we were all touched by Jesus here, buddy. All right, let's move on. (laughs) Also, he says that he'll be walking out of here in 64 days, which because his sentence was two years and 64 days, which I want to go back to the promise Jesus made that Dan mentioned earlier, he said, Jesus said, if you turn yourself in, you'll be out of jail before your son can speak and your girlfriend is pregnant with a boy. Oh, that's right. Jesus did a gender reveal as part of his magic trick. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Well, you would only show up if you're Jesus, if it is a boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't show up for (laughs) girl children. Let's not go crazy. chicks. Yeah. I wanted Jesus to set off a bomb back there for the gender reveal. And then like the SWAT team just starts shooting everybody. (laughs) 16 died in a gas explosion. And uh, uh, Jesus apparently revealed it was a boy. California lights on fire. That's where we are. Six wildfires started out of a gas station the other day because Jesus revealed to a criminal that he was having a boy. Everybody, let's give him a round of applause. In good news, this convinced the standoff to end. <laughs> mysterious ways, ladies and gentlemen. Mysterious saved ways. a good guy with a gun. Jesus kills 14 to save one soul, everybody. <laughs> Now, that's the God of the Bible right there. That's the best part of the little TED talk, too. The Cal's like, yeah, so Jesus totally got me out of trouble. Oh, sorry about the rest of you. I don't know. Do you have a Jesus story? Just me? Great. Totally. I'm out in 64 days. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. That is, I think, probably one of the best parts of that coda. But the other best part of it is he's sitting there and he's like, yeah, they said I shot the guy. But then on the stand, the guy who got shot was like, Doctors can't find a sign that I got shot, so who am I to, to disagree? <laughs> right. Like, What a weird answer for that guy. That dude's <laughs> engaging in a cover. A good guy with a gun <laughs> is going to go on the stand and be like, well, I guess everything's fine. No! The good guy with the gun is going to be like, that motherfucker shot me. I want him to have the death penalty, and Jesus saved me so I don't have to die in sin. Like, yeah. that's the weirdo guy that that is. Yeah, everybody is fucking lying about this whole everybody thing. Everybody is lying. Yeah. <laughs> Including Jesus! Including now we need which he's not allowed the Messiah. to do! Yep. Now we need a season of True Detective <laughs> unraveling what really happened man, in this gas station. Time is a flat circle when you see Jesus, man. I'm telling you. It was quiet. It was dark. And there were two vision boards. One with the good and one with the light. When you go into the back of this gas station, you're now in Carcosa. 
<laughs> Nobody sees the beast until the beast shows up. Now that's the, just the truth. <laughs> the thing that I think about that, like the rest of the people there, it's got to be sort of implied that Jesus gave all of them a chance, right? Why? Just a really subtle one, way subtler than Mrs. Cranston. They just got like Mrs. A sign Cranston didn't is catch. a real loud chance. Yeah, that was pretty. The loud. moment you say you've been made, just. I don't understand any crime where you say I've been made before you commit the crime. Yeah. If you've been made, you yeah. no yep, longer yep. commit the crime. Yeah. We're fucked. <laughs> Let's do it anyway. Let's yeah, not it. do it. Guess what? We didn't commit a crime yet. So we've been made means we <laughs> don't get to commit this crime and we all get to go home happy. We saw our friend, Mrs. Cranston. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Cranston. This could Cranston. be a nice day for us. <laughs> we got, we're getting gas, Mrs. Cranston. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did wrestle with the spiritual message of this, and I think it was worse because I watched the movie. Because in the movie, Jordan, <laughs> you haven't seen the movie. I have not. One of the things that is so constant in the movie is that, like, Sting, the character of Sting, I don't care about who he is in the well, movie, who gives, he's Sting. Who gives a shit? <laughs> he <laughs> is doubting. He will not go along with this Jesus who is running a diner called the Last Chance Diner. Right. Well, I mean, it's too on, it's too on the nose <laughs> to believe bit. in God. Yeah. And so, like, Jesus keeps explaining to him that, like, your grandma was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> your grandma prayed for you a lot. As your if, grandma was cool. As if now Jesus is bound to try to save this person because of the work of the grandma. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a chance that, like, Cal had some kind of, oh, because his dad did convert in prison. Right. Yeah. And so, like, so you're that's saying, right. You're saying maybe... If I understand correctly, you're saying that if all of the other people involved in the heist had grandparents yes. or parents who gave enough of a shit about them yep. to pray for it, they would have gotten second and, chance, and but only because Cal had a dad that gave a shit enough, despite JD being his fucking brother. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody in prison, too. Yeah, uh, they, they, if they had family members who prayed, right, right, right. Yes, no, but, 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 shut yeah, up, yeah, shut, no, no, shut no, you're right, you're right, you're right, right, you're right. Because right, right. at the end, JD shows up in the chapel in prison when uh, Cal's giving the TED talk. Yes, and it's sort of implied that he's coming around too. Yes, oh, yes. agreed. And he didn't get charged with a murder either. He he gets the benefit of Cal's conversion. No, do you know what? I, here's what I was thinking okay. for the longest time. Wait, and wait, guys. This show makes sense. This no, we're moving. We're, it's tied together. It does. Nailed it. I'm sorry. God awful movies is over. Now it's just me and Dan <laughs> figuring this shit out for good. But the thing that I've been thinking about that Dan has just pointed to was so much that this conception of God and Jesus is far more like a pyramid scheme than anything else, right? Yeah. So that is here's accurate. what happens. You convert to to Christianity, right? And then God gives you one save or whatever it right. is. So and, now and. Cal is going to raise his kids Christian, so they don't ever get the fucking save. They oh. don't get the save. They just have more Christian children out of that shit. So then God goes to the next person who gets the save, and then their children are It's all a fucking pyramid You need scheme, a downline. That's the important thing. Totally. Totally. Yeah, it's like a toll booth in the spiritual internet. Absolutely. You gotta have I figured it out. Underlines. Okay, counter <laughs> counter proposal. What if the encounter television show it takes place in a fictional universe where Jesus is forced, like some kind of bound genie, <laughs> to answer all the prayers in the world? <laughs> it does feel that way. So episode two is just gonna be him at a children's cancer ward just being like, fuck, man, all your parents, huh? All your parents prayed. Shit. Okay, a lot to do today. <laughs> it feels like that. Like it felt like he, it felt in the movie. It felt like he was really annoyed by Sting, and he was only there because his grandma kept praying. It's like a <laughs> Jesus. It's like if Quantum Leap had had Jesus in it, where he's like, Jesus, I gotta go to this place. Uh, I mean, me, I gotta go to this place now. God damn it! <laughs> and 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 also one of the, one of the biggest issues that I take with this this episode in general too is that like. There's such a transactional kind of feeling about Jesus. Yeah. There yeah. is like <laughs> Cal would not have accepted whatever was going on if it didn't come along with the carrot of I'm going to get you out of this problem. Yeah. What in. if what if Jesus is like, "Hey, no matter what's going to happen, you're going to do 25 to life mm -hmm. because your friend 
committed attempted murder. And as we all know, the law says that if you are in the <laughs> middle of a burglary where yeah. one of your friends commits attempted murder, all of you can be accused of attempted now, murder if and you do tried the right as thing, If you do the right thing and you give up and don't make the situation worse, you'll be able to meet your kid when it's in college. Hey, maybe right. maybe you'll get out <laughs> early on, on and like a dime. Yeah. Maybe you'll get out on a dime. And you, you can know? retain your relationship with your child's totally. mother and maybe... She'll bring it, uh, your child to the totally. jail and you can have a relationship, but yeah. you're going to prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think he would have, would have gone along with it? Probably no. Not. He would have been like, Hey, Satan, what's your offer? Yeah. Probably, <laughs> then be like, let me get a cell phone. I got to talk to somebody to negotiate something. <laughs> let me, let me. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I want the SWAT team to give me a, a Satan cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a coyote that'll get me to hell? I'd like a coyote into hell really quick. I'd like to hear from Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So I get it. Duke of Hell, and I don't do any jail time. I'm going to go for it. I'll take that deal. I'll Duke, take that deal any Duke, day. Duke, Duke of Hell. Duke, Duke, Duke of Hell. Duke. All right. Well, I think we just described the moral of the story in several different ways. Does anybody have any other theories beyond what <laughs> the transactional nature of Jesus Christ? I do feel like it's exploitative. I yeah, really totally. do think, like, as somebody who grew up religious and I don't have like a real anti-religious bent like a lot of folks I know do. Sure. And I don't, I don't judge people who do, but like, sure. It, I, I don't think that religion is an implicit negative, but the version of religion that's painted in this, I think is an actually entirely negative view. 100%. I think it's horrible. <laughs> it's really <laughs> fucked up. It's just a really inefficient system by Jesus overall. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my biggest problem with it. That's true too. Yeah. 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 No, it is, it's hard to grapple with the fact that if this is popular Christian entertainment, then what Christians really want is the Twilight Zone version of God. You know, where there's a moral of the story, mm -hmm. there's a fun little twist, and then everybody moves on with their lives having learned the lesson of like, don't knock over a gas station, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Christians don't want a religion. They want a thrive pitch that ends with a threat. <laughs> Totally. It's so, it's so surface level. It's yeah. so surface level. It's so bullshit of like, man, I, I mean, I almost, I almost long for people who gave a shit about God to, to actually make this show. Mm -hmm. Cause it'd be fucked up if you really read the Bible and you make this show, well, then God shows up and he's like, Hey, guess what? Bad shit happens. Frankly, I don't even know why. That's why you don't ask me questions. Well, it's interesting because if you'd watched the movie, one of the things that Sting brings up is like, you had your people kill all the Canaanites. Yeah. That's genocide, That's bro. That's a real genocide, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, straight up. He Bruh. He brings, Bruh? He, straight up. He brings that up, and Jesus' character, his only answer is, yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yep. that's yep. but that's <laughs> yeah, the thing. That. That's the thing about the Bible that I do. <laughs> nothing. That's the thing about the Bible that I actually respect. That's one of the few things about the Bible that I do respect is when they're this is literally dangerous. like this is dangerous. No, no, no. When they're literally like God just goes, "Don't question me. I'm God." Because to me, that reads like a guy writing a book of the Bible who's like, "I don't understand either." We're trying to get through this, right? Because I'm your dad, and I said so. Go fuck exactly. yourself. Exactly. 100 percent. the thing that jordan admires about the bible is no half measures yeah. <laughs> totally totally look if you're gonna fucking be a calvinist sack up and do it <laughs> nothing means anything everything's predestined it doesn't matter if you care or don't care god has said you're gonna act like you do move on with your life it's fascinating how this episode of this television show is so incredibly boring and yet somehow incited this level of rant <laughs> <laughs> hard brought out the hard Calvinism in Jordan. <laughs> if you'd like to buy your hard Calvinist Jordan t-shirt, you can do so at godawfulmovies.com. We've got the uh... watch the new series. Jordan somehow gets mad at C-SPAN. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yes, moral of the story is basically you're Christian, you get sky cake, you're Jewish, you don't. The end. Yeah. Fair. That's a fair reading. And uh, that's going to do it for our review of The Encounter, Episode 1. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we found another bad movie somewhere. So, Eli, what's on deck? We'll be watching the first in a series of kids' movies, Super Kid Academy, The Intruder. 
All right. Well, with Super Kid Academy, the intruder to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 305 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Jordan and Dan for joining us again. And uh, before we wrap it up, where can everyone hear more from you guys? Well, I have a, a show coming up on Pure Flix. Me and David, uh, <laughs> White, we worked out a deal where I'm going to punch up some of these these shows. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we're just doing complete page one rewrites yes. of all of the pure flick shows <laughs> what if these didn't suck <laughs> <laughs> classic question yeah <laughs> so look for that in 2022 yeah Excellent. if you uh if you haven't seen those or don't have a pure flick subscription then you can probably find us at knowledgefight.com or the like there We've also got a show called God's Damn Wizard that's coming out. You can find that on YouTube right now. All kinds of fun things. It's a fun D&D adventure. It's a fun D&D adventure if uh, people enjoy that. Yeah, I just learned to play D&D recently. Excellent. This is my first uh, 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 Your first taste campaign? of it as well. It's, yeah. It's, it's tough to get used to. This is essentially is. four, five, no, five people who've never played, or no, four people and one person who's played a lot of D&D before. Yeah. All uh, kind of muddling their way through a weird story. All right. Fantastic. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and DD Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. The legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Jordan, Dan, and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Janitor Jesus would go on to stop a murder with contrasting crochet products and some insider trading with no less than four embroidery examples. Earl went on to get arrested for trying to steal Nancy Pelosi's lectern. All of the hostages would go on to live terrified lives where no one believed what they had been through and uh, constantly questioned their own sanity. They all ended up in hospitals. Thanks, Jesus. Mr. Patel has been dead for 10 years. <laughs> and Heath, if you could just yeah. bring some like good energy to this intro, just like don't get too in your head, but just like good energy. <laughs> Welcome people to the show. Wait, like, like, you got real hey, guests. Uh, uh, listen, like, Heath, Heath don't suck it up this time. You got knowledge fight hanging out. <laughs> We're gonna, big we'll fucking yeah. come for you. Do you think we won't? Welcome yeah. back to God of the Movies. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Just like friendly, but not so, nervous. Wait, okay, like we're trying to. What turn do you mean, like guys into friends? Will you give me a like number low... from one to ten, like how much energy? Yeah, like so, like a fourteen. Fourteen out of ten. Okay. If you yeah. try and beat me, you're in trouble. So shoot for that. <laughs> shoot for Jordan. Minus yeah, but don't one. insult our Jordan guests. Exactly. One, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jordan minus one. Brr, got it. Jordan minus one. Jordan minus one. Okay. Welcome, stupid. No, no. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all I'm... Okay. I got this. I, I'm uh, relaxed, casual, just hanging out with my friends. Okay. Tight. That's real close. <laughs> oh, I was so spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're ready for some fucking hilarity in this segment, Morgan. No more holding back. Yeah, it just went terrible right as you said that. <laughs> I was going to say, the more excited you are, the worse it sounds. No. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Segment two. I'm recording. I'm recording. Zencaster is recording and your internet is slower now. It's it's not recording because it's going to keep the internet fast. Record. I don't record. <laughs> what did we just talk about with this tone of voice? <laughs> We, no, I Dan, didn't listen Jordan, to all the people. Tell Eli That's what just me we just not talked listen. about when my tone of voice is like this. I, I find that Ooh, it's, I find it I'm helps with Jordan girl. that if he's getting a little out of pocket, I just go. <laughs> 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 Do the yeah, neck yeah, pinch, yeah, a couple yeah. fingers to my yeah. neck, and it yeah. really it really calms me down. It really reminds me of my place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 click. Eli, did you hear that? 
<laughs> you know I hate those clicks. <laughs> I also do positive conditioning sometimes. Like <laughs> when he's good, I give him a beer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He associates obeying. With, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eli, you want a cube of tofu? <laughs> You know I want a tube cube tofu. Don't tease me. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.